conductor's role in this whole process is to hopefully uh, see what the character, how the character is being developed and then make musical determinations based on that. But I still have what Verdi wrote right in front of me and a 30 second note is a 30 second note. You know, you don't have a lot of leeway there. Um, but what you try to do interpretively is to find a pacing that really goes with how the scene is going. And I'll tell you, every time you do it with a different cast, it will be completely different. It's always just a, a, a pleasure to do this kind of process, uh, working on La Traviata with Lillian in particular, because we work hand in glove. The music comes from the text and you know informs the text and vice versa. Um, and uh, I got to know this piece for the first time when I was in college and uh, I, I really, always just loved it from the first moment that I heard it and, and now this is a third or fourth production that uh, I've been associated with on it and it, it gets better every single time. It's always challenging to put together the orchestra with the stage, right? You know, it's 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 one of the the, the things that we have to do as opera conductors um, and we sort of act as the fulcrum between the pit and the stage. However, in a process that's been as dramatically intensive as this process has been, this rehearsal process uh, with Lillian, um, so much of what I'm doing is listening to what's happening on stage and really making sure that uh, not only are things together, but that what we're doing downstairs, as it were, is serving what's going on on stage. So the audience has a picture of the piece as a cohesive whole and not a symphony plus, you know, 18 to 40 singers on stage. Because of the generous amount of rehearsal time that we have here at Virginia Opera, we've been really able to explore the piece. And all of us that are experienced with the piece, that are first timers, we're all finding new things. And that's of course the testament to a great work of art is every single time you do it, you find something new and something that moves you in a slightly different way. And I've been very fortunate, particularly in the past decade, to work on many, many, many productions, uh, but in particular to work with Lillian has always been a highlight for me. I, I'm, I'm fortunate that I have a very sort of small-ish group of directors that I get to work with fairly regularly, and whenever I get to partner with Lillian, I just know that it's gonna be a very intense process, but one that is incredibly rewarding. Uh, a few years ago, we did Madama Butterfly in Boston for Boston Lyric Opera, and again, a piece that is done all the time could be very pat and just, you know, butterfly enters with the fan and the umbrella or whatever. Um, what was so wonderful was to find every moment dramatically and it, it really informs how I want to keep working uh, because if, it, if you're just sort of, as we call instant opera, you know, pour it in the mug and stir, it's completely boring and doesn't move the audience. And with audience attention at a premium nowadays, we have to do everything we can to make it as compelling as possible and make the musical storytelling as compelling as possible. So that's everything from text intention to the stage picture to, of course, glorious, glorious singing and wonderful playing from the orchestra in the pit.